Sarah was in her hotel room when she heard a knock on the door. When she looked through the people, she saw a man standing outside. Sorry for bothering you. I'm the hotel manager, he said. Our database has crashed, and I need to recheck some information. Sarah said she would be back in a moment, got away from the door, and called the hotel security. She said there is a man trying to rob her. How did she know? Look at the man's name tag. It's a female name. He's not the real hotel manager. When Anna got to school, she noticed that her friend Joan was very upset. It was just the beginning of the day, but someone had already stolen her backpack. Joan left the classroom to go to the bathroom, and at that moment, someone must have got inside and stolen her things. Anna started her own investigation. Jenna from the robotics lab said she'd been fixing a robot that morning. Kate from the cheerleading squad had just begun her practice. And James said he'd spent three hours trying to solve a math problem and was now exhausted. Anna knew right away who had taken the backpack. Can you figure it out? It was James. The school day had just started. How could he have been there for three hours already? On a beautiful morning, Michael and Christina went on a hike. At some point, they saw a river they had to cross. Both of them needed to get to the other side. However, the boat could only make one trip back and forth and take one of them at a time. Still, both of them managed to get across. How? That's easy. They both went on a hike on the same day, but they weren't together, so they arrived at the river at the same time but they were on the opposite banks. So after the boat took Christina to the other side of the river, Michael managed to get to the opposite bank too. At a party, there were nine candies in a box. Nine people took nine candies, but one candy was still in the box. How could that be possible? The last person took the candy that was still in the box. When the day after tomorrow becomes yesterday, then today will be as far from Sunday as the day it was today when the day before yesterday was tomorrow. Which day is it? It's Sunday. Look, the day after tomorrow becomes yesterday on Wednesday. The day before yesterday was tomorrow on Thursday. And Wednesday and Thursday are equally far from Sunday. Susanna was walking down the street when she saw a dog. It looked like the dog had just run away, so she picked it up and started searching for its owner. She walked into a co-working space. There were three people there. Susanna knew immediately who the owner was. How did she figure it out? Look at the guy in the middle. He's sitting on top of a dog leash. It was Brian's birthday, and he organized a game for his friends. He placed two cards, one yellow and one red, inside a box. The rule said that if a person picked the red card, they would win $7,000. But if they picked the yellow card, they would have to pay $700. Nobody knew that Brian had lied. He'd put two yellow cards inside the box instead of one red and one yellow. Brian's friend Sandra watched her friends lose the game one by one. But when it was Sandra's turn, she won $7,000. How? When it was her turn, she picked one of the yellow cards, not showing it to anyone. Then she picked the remaining card, which was also yellow, and showed it to her friends. Brian had to admit that the first card she'd drawn and hidden was red. Otherwise, all his friends would know he was a liar. Way to go, Sandra. Amy has to escape from a high-security room, but to do so, she has to solve a riddle. There are two strings in the room, and the only information she has is that each string takes exactly one hour to burn. She needs to time exactly 45 minutes with the help of the strings. 
How can she do it? Amy should light both ends of the first string and one end of the second string. In 30 minutes, the first string will burn completely since it'll burn twice faster with both ends on fire. Then, she should light the second end of the second string. At that time, the second string will have 30 minutes left to burn. But by lighting its other end, Amy will make it burn in 15 minutes. Voila! 45 minutes measured. On January 1st, Devin called the police to report a crime. He said he'd gone to his neighbor's New Year's Eve party the night before. And while he was away, someone broke into his house and stole his laptop and other valuables. When the police asked about the party, Devin said it had been great. There was good food and string lights were shining brightly and beautifully. Devin added that his neighbor could have been the one to steal his things. Maybe he snuck inside the house when Devin was at his place, having fun. The police officer went to interrogate Devin's neighbor, Tom. But as soon as Tom opened the door, the officer knew he wasn't guilty. Devin was lying. How did he understand this? Look at the string lights on the tree. They're missing three bulbs. It means they couldn't be working the night before. Devin is lying. Matthew was on an expedition to the South Pole. He had been exploring the area for days when a storm began. Looking for shelter, he managed to find two caves. In the first cave, there was a very hungry looking polar bear. In the second cave, the air was filled with toxic gas. Which cave should he choose? The first cave. Polar bears don't live at the South Pole. Jerry has an apple tree. The number of apples on his tree doubles every week. 30 weeks later, the tree is completely covered in fruit. Can you guess how many weeks the tree will need to become covered in oranges? Oranges don't grow on apple trees, but if I asked you about apples, the answer would be 29 weeks because, as we know, the number of apples doubles every week. Nobody has ever walked this way. What way is it? The Milky Way Dave was held in a 150-foot high tower of an ancient castle. In his cell, there was nothing other than a pair of scissors and a 75-foot long rope. Despite this, when the guards came to check on him the next morning, they saw he had managed to escape. How did he do it? He cut the rope in the middle, but rather than cutting it across, he cut it along. Then, he tied both pieces of the rope together and safely got down to the ground. Genius, huh? On the outskirts of the town, there was a haunted house. A group of friends decided to check it out. They went there at night, but as soon as they got there, one of the friends, John, refused to go inside and tried to stop the others. But they just laughed at him and went inside, leaving him behind. There were several terrible crashing sounds coming from the house. And then everything went still. John never saw his friends again. How did John understand that there was something seriously wrong with the house? John was very attentive. He noticed that there were lots of footprints leading towards the house, but none going away. Rachel was in her office when security called her, saying there was a robber in the building and he was trying to escape. She ran to the elevators to get outside. But two elevators arrived at the same time. In each of them, there was a man that looked suspicious and could be the robber. How can Rachel understand which elevator is safe to take? The one that's going up. If the robber is trying to get out of the building, his elevator will be going down. So driving through the country to visit their family, 
One day, late at night, they were on a lonely country road. That's when a powerful storm broke and their car tire burst. They had to leave the vehicle to find help, but there was nothing and no one around. Some time later, they came across an old and spooky mansion that seemed abandoned, but the guys decided to try and see if anyone lived there and could help them. They arrived at the mansion gate. On a metal address plaque, it was written, The House of Riddles. Gemma and Andy got suspicious, but they desperately needed shelter from the storm and some help with their car. So they decided to enter. But the gate was locked. There was a digital security keypad on it and nothing else. Suddenly, they heard a sound coming from the gate intercom. A voice said, The answer to this riddle of mine is the password you need to unlock the gate. I sleep by day and fly at night, but I have no feathers to aid my flight. What am I? That's a bat. When the guys arrived at the door, they saw there was something engraved on it. Stop right there, wanderer. Don't knock on the door just yet. For if you knock more or fewer times than you should, that you're gonna regret. Here's your second riddle. I am an odd number, but I become even if you take away a letter. What am I? Gemma and Andy realized that the number equaled the number of times they had to knock on the door for it to open. Can you help them figure out the correct number? The answer is seven, so they had to knock on the door seven times. A scary old butler opened the door and let the guys in. The door suddenly closed behind their backs and then just vanished into thin air. There were no doors in the room they had entered. The butler said, Welcome mortals to your doom. To make it out of this house, you have to solve every riddle in every room. If you can't, you'll stay in this place forever. Here's your riddle for this room. Which bride is marrying this groom? If they managed to figure out the answer, a door would appear. If they could not, well, too bad. Do you see the shadows behind them? The third bride's shadow is holding hands with the groom's shadow. They're in love. So she must be his chosen one. After they answered the riddle correctly, a door appeared in front of them. They got into the next room, which was a library. Three books fell from a bookcase in front of their feet. Then they heard the butler's voice echoing. You have to open one of these books, but choose wisely, because whatever creature the book mentions, it will appear here. If Gemma and Andy opened the first book, a venomous basilisk would come out. If they opened the second book, a giant piranha monster with razor-sharp teeth would appear in the library. If they opened the third book, a fire-breathing dragon would charge at them. Which book should they choose? Since the giant piranha is a water creature, it can't survive on land, so the guys should choose the second book. The library door opened, and they walked into the next room. It turned out to be a dining room. A large mirror covered one of its walls. Yet, the reflection of the room in the mirror had some differences from the real room. Can you spot them? The reflection of the deer statue in the mirror has more antlers. In the reflection, you can see someone hiding behind the curtains. But there's no one besides Gemma and Andy in the room. And lastly, in the mirror, one of the plates on the table is different from the others. But in the real dining room, all the plates are the same. Gemma and Andy felt very hungry. Thankfully, the next door that opened led them to the kitchen. There were three different chefs inside. The first chef was a zombie. The second one was a vampire. And the third chef was human. Each of them was holding a pie in their hands. But only one pie was safe to eat. Which one? Do you see the bugs coming out of the zombie chef's pie? Yikes! The pie that the human chef is holding is glowing in a weird way. Looks dangerous to me. 
So they should choose the vampire chef's pie. Because that's not blood, that's cherry sauce on top. If it was blood, the vampire would have already eaten that. After they answered the riddle, two doors appeared in front of them. One of them had Gemma's name on it, and the other had Andy's. The butler sneaked behind the guys and pushed Gemma through the Gemma door, and Andy through the Andy door. Gemma fell down a pit and found herself in a mysterious garden. She accidentally woke a garden gnome who had been sleeping. He got very angry with her, and still, he agreed to let Gemma go if she answered his question correctly. He showed Gemma three tiny mushroom houses and asked which one was his home. Can you figure it out? Do you see the flower on the gnome's hat? The door handle of the second mushroom house handle is the same flower, so that must be his home. Andy, on the other hand, fell into a magical dungeon. The dungeon guard was an ogre, and he looked very pleased to finally have a prisoner. Yet he agreed to let Andy go if the guy chose the correct magical portal to escape. Two magical portals appeared in front of him. Each of them led to a room. Andy had to stay inside the room of his choice for five minutes. The first room was full of poisonous gas that would knock him out in four minutes, and the second room was filled with water. If Andy opted for this room, he would have to be chained to the floor with the water rising really fast. In which room can the guy survive? Andy should choose the first room. He should take a breath and try not to breathe for a minute. After that, he'll have to wait for four minutes for the door to open, and then he can escape. Both Gemma and Andy were magically transported to the hallway after having answered their riddles correctly. They were happy to be together again. At the end of the hallway, there was a door, and in front of the door, a witch stood. She placed three long magic wands on the table in front of her and said, You do not need to do anything to one of these wands. One you must break in half, and one needs to be even shorter than that half. The witch added that they could only answer once. And if their answer was wrong, she wouldn't open the door. So, can you tell which wand should be the longest, which one they need to break into half, and which one needs to be the shortest? Do you see those spiders hanging from the ceiling? Since the door is shaped like a spider, they must be giving Gemma and Andy a hint. The silk thread that the first spider is hanging on is the shortest, so the first wand needs to be the shortest. The silk thread that the second spider is hanging on is the longest, which means that the second wand needs to remain as it is. And the silk thread that the third spider is hanging on is of a medium length, which means that the guys need to break the third wand in half. The witch opened the door and Gemma and Andy entered a bedroom. Three spirits were floating inside, each of them claimed to be the owner of the mansion. Gemma knew only one of them was telling the truth. Who is it? The spirit of the elderly lady is telling the truth. Why? Let's rewind a bit. Did you notice the portraits hanging on the walls in the hallway? There's a portrait of this very lady. That can only mean she used to be one of the owners of the mansion. The next stop was a living room. When they walked in, Andy saw something weird. What was it? A face appears and disappears in the fireplace. The guys entered a study next. What's so weird here? The fingers of this medieval knight's armor are tapping on the sword. The next room was a guest bedroom. What's weird here? The crystal ball is showing someone trapped in the basement. Gemma and Andy decided to take a look at the basement in case someone really needed help. Yet they had to crack another riddle to enter. There was a password panel, and they needed to type in seven digits to unlock the door. They had no idea what the passcode could be. Luckily, there was a note on the wall, and this word was written on it. What does it even mean?
Turn the note upside down. What do you see now? The letters look like numbers, right? So the passcode is 1837837. There were three people in the basement who claimed to be trapped there, but only one of them was telling the truth. Who is that? Do you see the stitches on the elbows of this lady? She's a creepy rag doll, so she's lying. And this man has claws instead of fingers. He must be a shapeshifter or something. Then it must be this guy who's telling the truth. So Gemma and Andy took him with them. After the guys answered every riddle in every room correctly, the butler appeared again. Thank you, travelers. Now you're free to go. But this, you must know. All of us in this house are cursed. Answer this one last riddle for the curse to be reversed. Once we are finally free, we'll help you with your car too. You'll see. There are nine people in front of you. One of them is a monster who cursed us. Tell us who. This guy has two horns that are hiding in his hair. He is not a human. He's a monster. Look at the picture very attentively. Can you tell which prisoner is rich? The first one is sewing something. She must be working as a seamstress. She probably isn't that rich. The second one has some pieces of jewelry. But in the second place where the prisoners are, the golden chains don't mean much. The third one is reading quietly and doesn't cause any trouble. That's a rich person's behavior. They usually don't want to attract attention, especially in jail. It was November, but Jasmine already had some bad grades at school. So, her mother, Mrs. Lawrence, grounded her until Jasmine improved her grades. Mrs. Lawrence worked night shifts and had to leave for work. One day, when she returned home, she realized that Jasmine had sneaked out at night to go to a party. How did Mrs. Lawrence understand it? It's fall. The car is parked right under the tree. But unlike their neighbor's cars, it's not covered in leaves. It means Jasmine had just returned home after the night party. Vienna was wandering in a forest and came across a huge and spooky mansion. When she walked in, the door behind her back got locked. It was an old magician's house. He didn't like when strangers visited his mansion. Soon, Vienna saw three drinks on the table. The yellow one would allow the girl to live for a month without water or food. The purple one would make her the size of an index finger for an hour. The blue one would give her a lion's strength for half an hour. Which one should she drink? The purple drink. She'll become small and she'll be able to escape through that little cat door. Esme was walking in the forest, but she got lost. Soon, the girl found the witch's house, entered it, petted the cat, and asked if the witch could send her home. The witch had just gotten a new laptop and a three-digit password. She asked Esme to figure out what it was. Esme made four guesses. 357, 902, 907, 954. Obviously, she didn't get it right. The witch gave her a hint. Each of Esme's guesses had one correct digit, and it was exactly in the right place. What's the password? The first digit can't be 9, so it's 3. Then, the second and third digits can't be 5 and 7, so the second digit must be 0, and the third one is 4 which means the code is 304. Sailor and Evie were best friends who wanted to spend the winter vacation together. Unfortunately, Sailor's grandmother fell ill and she had to go to another city to be with her. Evie was missing her friend. Once, she was walking past her empty house. Soon, 
Evie realized that Sailor had lied to her about the grandma and was actually at home. How did Evie understand it? Look, it's been snowing that day, but there's no snow near Sailor's house. It means that Sailor must be there. Mrs. Rivera was a math teacher grading her students' homework. Halfway through, she came across two similar homework sheets. The woman realized that one of the students had copied the work of the other because the mistakes were the same. The sheet on the right is McKenna's, and the left one belongs to Maeve. Can you tell who copied the other's homework? Look, McKenna corrected herself a couple of times. Well, Maeve's work is exceptionally neat, except for the mistakes. Mrs. Rivera corrected. This means that McKenna was doing her homework by herself, occasionally making typos and mistakes. And Maeve's paper is neat because she just copied McKenna's work. One day, Mrs. York invited some guests to a fancy dinner in her mansion. A couple of teenagers were running around, exploring the house. When Mrs. York went to the basement, she saw that the showcase that contained her jewelry collection was broken. One girl, Hannah, admitted she'd thrown a baseball, and it had accidentally hit the showcase. But the showcase had already been damaged by that time. Can you tell if she's lying? The crack from the baseball must be the one on the right. If the baseball was the first thing to crack the glass, the cracks would stretch to the frame of the showcase, but they only reached the other cracks, which means that the baseball was, indeed, secondary damage. So Hannah told the truth. Mrs. Jones was working a night shift. Her daughter Venus wanted to invite a friend to sleep over, but Mrs. Jones didn't allow it because it was a school night. When she returned, she realized that the friend had actually visited Venus. How did she understand it? There are two sets of plates and cups in Venus's room. It means that she didn't spend the evening alone. Now, how about having more fun? I'll show you some emojis, and you'll have to guess an animated movie. Let's start with an easy one. Which animated movie is it? Yes, it's Sleeping Beauty. Okay, the next one. What's your guess? Of course, it's everyone's favorite, Up. What do you have to say about this one? Animals hanging out in the forest? It's bittersweet Bambi. Now, off to a girl's absolute obsession. Yes, that's frozen. Let it go. Let's make it a tiny bit harder for you. It's sweet Wally. -E. What about the next one? It's Ratatouille. Off to the next one. What's your guess? A movie about a crazy princess with a frying pan and a chameleon? The one and only Tangled. The next one is an oldie but a goodie.
It's Monsters, Inc. What can you say about this one? Coco, I'm sure you'd love it if you watched it. Okay, a crazy one for you. Think about it. Joy, sadness, disgust, fear, and anger. That's inside out. And the last one's for you. Don't overthink. It's pretty simple. Yes, that's Toy Story. Dakota and Tatum both failed their math test. Their mother grounded them and made them study all weekend. She occasionally walked into the teenager's room to check on them. Take a look at the girls. Can you tell which one hadn't been studying before her mom walked in? It's Dakota, sitting on her bed, reading the math book. But there's no copy book or pen nearby. No one just reads math books. Math is more about writing and doing exercises. Just look at Tatum. Andromeda came to her PE class and told her teacher that, unfortunately, she couldn't participate in class because she had broken her arm. The teacher didn't believe her and told the girl to stop fooling around. Do you think Andromeda tells the truth? Why didn't the teacher believe her? Look, her cast is put over her hoodie. It must be fake. In the middle of the day, the lights in a jewelry store went off for a minute. Once the lights were back, the seller saw that the most expensive diamond had been stolen. There were three customers in the store at that time. Desmond, a blind man, said that he couldn't have stolen anything. Cassidy said that while the lights had been off, she'd been standing without moving. Kira said that she'd been trying to find her cell phone to turn on the flashlight. Who stole the diamond? It must be Desmond. He pretends to be blind, but look, he has a camera. He wouldn't need it if he was really blind. Last week, Pandora went to a party without asking her dad for permission. Mr. Pond found out about this and grounded the girl for two weeks. There was another party planned for the next weekend, but Pandora had to stay in her room. The morning after the party, Mr. Pond came to his daughter's room and asked what she'd been doing the evening before. She said she'd been painting. Pandora got grounded for another month. Why? There are indeed painting supplies on her desk, but the picture is barely started. Mr. Pond realized that Pandora hadn't been painting for long because she had sneaked out and gone to the party. Another day, another incident. This time, another jewelry store was robbed. Two of the most expensive wedding rings were stolen. It happened after the store closed. So the main suspects were the cleaning man and security guard, the only people who had the keys to the store. Detective Jane decided to visit both men, look at their houses and figure out who stole the rings. It must be the security guy. He obviously lives with a girlfriend, and it seems like they want to get married. That's why he stole the rings. Michelle had a birthday party, and she invited several friends. Flora didn't want to go because she didn't like being around many people. So she lied that her mom had grounded her and made her clean her room. The next day, she invited Michelle to her house to study together and watch a movie in the evening. Michelle agreed. But at Flora's house, she understood that her friend had lied to her. How? Wow. 
Flora's room is still messy. If she had cleaned it the day before, it'd be neat now. Three sisters, Serenity, Autumn, and Polaris, were at a party. They were offered to play a game. If they won, they'd get a good prize. There were five hats, three white ones and two blue ones. Each girl stood in line, one after another, and got one random hat. Serenity could see the colors of both her sisters' hats. Autumn could only see what Polaris was wearing, and Polaris couldn't see any of her sisters. Anyone could speak up and try to guess her hat's color, but it could only be one of the girls. If she got it right, they'd all win. After a while, Polaris guessed the color of her hat correctly. How did she do it? Both her if Serenity sue blue hats, she'd be but she didn't speak up. One of the hats she saw Autumn realized that if her had a blue hat, she has a white one. But which means Harris realized that and said Lucas and Hudson are walking. Which one of them isn't very smart? It's Hudson. He's staring at the screen of his phone and can miss that cliff and fall over. Even though Lucas is blind, he still has his stick. With its help, he'll know about the edge of the cliff as soon as he reaches it. He's safe. Opal is spending a vacation climbing the mountains. Karis is climbing Everest. Can you tell which one of them isn't smart? It's Opal. Look, she's forgotten about the safety rope and is climbing without it. Not good. Gabriel and Archer are bloggers who take selfies in dangerous places. This time, Gabriel is taking a selfie while surfing a huge wave. And Archer has chosen to take one while standing on the edge of the bridge above the lake. Who is not being careful? It's Gabriel. They're both doing very risky things. But at least Archer has some people around who can help him if something happens. Gabriel is alone in the ocean. It's a very early morning after a party. Egan and Bradley are driving their children to college. Can you tell who's not smart? Egan. His son isn't even in the car. Delilah and Ellery are on vacation. Both of them decided to learn something new. Delilah is skiing in the forest, and Ellery is practicing skating on the lake. Who is in danger? It's Ellery. Look, the ice on the lake is cracking, and there's no one around to help her. She should get out of there as fast as possible. Ariana and Eliza are getting ready for a barbecue party they're hosting. Ariana is making salads outside, and Eliza is decorating the house and the garden. Who's not being smart? It's Ariana. While she's busy with the salads, the meat is going bad in the sun. Karis, a mother of four, returned home and saw that all the teenagers were quietly doing their own stuff. The oldest one, Amanda, was playing Uno, Gabriella was reading, Haven was painting. What was Ainsley doing? Ainsley was playing Uno with Amanda. Take a look at these guys and tell who is behaving stupidly. All the guys on the left, they will all fall in the end. The only guy who will stay on the tree is the one on the right. Detective Callum was spending his holiday in Hawaii. He was having his evening coffee on the terrace when he heard some noise and a scream. The balcony door of the room next to his was open, so he walked in and asked what had happened. A young actress, Chanel, was staying there. 
She said some man dressed in black and wearing a mask broke into her room and tried to take her away. She screamed, and the criminal ran away, disappearing in the hallway. The actress asked Detective Callum to find the man immediately. But the detective said Chanel could try to fool someone else, and he'd rather return to his coffee. Why didn't he believe the girl? Look at the door of the actress's room. Lots of boxes are blocking it. If the man had indeed run out of the door, he'd have pushed all the stuff out of his way. Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to open it. The girl just tried to make up some drama to get media attention. Adam came to his PE class and told the teacher that, unfortunately, he couldn't work out. He broke his arm the other day. But Adam had a bad reputation. The teacher didn't believe him and told the guy to stop fooling around. Do you believe Adam? Look, he has a cast on his arm, but it's placed over his jacket. It must be fake. Mrs. Miller reported that someone in the neighborhood had run up to her and stolen her bag. The authorities interrogated all the neighbors. Bryce said he had been away. I came home less than a minute ago. Arden said she'd spent all day at home and hadn't been outside. Easton said he had taken his dog for a walk, but he didn't steal anything or see anything strange. The authorities arrested one person. Who? They arrested Bryce. He said he'd just come home. But the water in the pot on the stove is boiling. He must have been at home for a while already. Ames worked in a clock store. One day, he called the police. When they arrived, Ames told them he had been working when the electricity suddenly went off. He tried to solve the problem by himself first. Then he called the police. They soon figured out what had happened, and the lights were on again. Ames immediately checked the cash desk. Apparently, while the lights were off, someone broke into the store and stole all the money. But the police didn't believe him and arrested the man. Why? In the store, there were mechanical and electric clocks. But the difference between the time they display is just 10 minutes. Mechanical clocks don't stop when the electricity is off. It means that the lights were off only for about 10 minutes. Ames must have switched the electricity off by himself and then called the police. Nelson was a writer. He was always disturbed by teenagers gathering outside his house and couldn't focus. One day, the man called the police. When they arrived, he said someone had thrown a stone at his office window. He asked the police to officially prohibit the teenagers from coming anywhere close to his house. But the detective didn't believe him. Why? Look, the glass is broken at the bottom, but this part of the window is protected by the balcony outside. Nelson must have broken the window himself to accuse the teenagers. A family was on vacation, and they had no idea what day it was. Dad said, eh, I'm pretty sure it's either Monday or Tuesday. Mom added, all I know is that it wasn't Wednesday yesterday. Jake said, it must be Wednesday or the weekend. Sienna was in doubt. Maybe it's Friday. Ruby said, Friday is tomorrow. Can you tell what day it is if only one statement is true? According to Dad, it's Monday or Tuesday. According to Mom, it's any day other than Thursday. So it might be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Jake is sure it's Wednesday, Saturday, or Sunday. Sienna claims it's Friday, and according to Ruby, it's Thursday. The only day that is mentioned only once is Thursday. It means Ruby is right. Paige and Quinley were sisters. They were hanging out together in their room. Quinley had a crush on a guy from her school. She decided to write him a letter. Paige thought it was a bad idea, but Quinley wouldn't listen to her. Once she was almost done, Quinley went downstairs to get some tea. When she returned, the letter was gone. 
page said that a gust of wind suddenly blew in and the letter flew out of the window. But Quinley didn't believe her and asked Paige to give her the letter back. How did she figure out her sister had taken the letter? When the wind blows inside a room from the outside, nothing can possibly fly out of the window. Colton got into an accident and had memory loss. Kennedy and Isla both claimed to be his girlfriend. They took the guy to the place where they had their first date. Each of the girls hoped Colton would decide she was his real girlfriend. Have you figured out who the guy dated? Look, there are initials painted on the tree, saying C plus I. It means Colton's girlfriend is Isla. In a hotel, someone robbed a rich gentleman. The only witness was Joseph, a cleaning man working in the hotel. He was tidying a room nearby at the time of the robbery. The detective asked the man if he had seen anything. Joseph said, When I heard the noise, I was going to enter the room. But then the door opened and hit me on the head. I couldn't see for a while. Joseph even showed the police officer a bruise on his forehead. The detective didn't believe Joseph, though, and arrested him for assisting the robber. Why? The door couldn't hit Joseph because it opens inwards, so he lied. After an accident, Karis was staying in the hospital. Only relatives were allowed to visit her. But three guys wanted to see the girl, her boyfriend, a classmate who was in love with her, and her brother. Each of them said he was her brother. Take a look at the guy's identity cards and try to figure out who her brother is. Her brother must be Philip. The age difference between Karis and Colton is 4 months, and between Karis and Nero, 5. Such an age gap is too small for them to be siblings. Maddox came to the police station to report his cousin, Damon. The guy asked Maddox if he could stay with him for a couple of days. In the evening, Damon asked the host to bring him some fruit from the basement. When Maddox went there, Damon locked him inside. There was no electricity and no light in the basement. And Maddox didn't have a single gadget with him that could help him out. Two days later, at 4 a.m., he heard his cousin drive away. It was only later that day that he managed to get out thanks to a postman. Maddox found out that all his money had been stolen. But the police officers didn't believe him. Why? Maddox said he hadn't had any gadgets to check the time. It was also too dark to see anything on a regular clock then how could he figure out when exactly his cousin drove away? Hmm. One Sunday, Tom told his brother Dan that he was going hiking with his friend Chris. The next Saturday, the police found Tom unconscious in the forest. Dan said he had been working all week. As for Chris, he was found wandering along the highway. He explained that he had gotten lost in the forest almost immediately after they had arrived and just found his way home. One of the guys was lying. Who was it? Look at Chris. He's too well-shaven for a man who spent a week in the woods. There are five girls in the room. Ashley is drawing, Olivia is reading, Maria is playing hide-and-seek, and Emma is tidying up. What's Sarah doing? Sarah is playing hide-and-seek with Maria, of course. What number is missing? A small hint, it's not number 4. Number 5 is missing. The subsequent number of 234 is 235. In the small town of Sunshine Valley, three teachers went on a sick leave all on the same day. 
Jenna says she got into a car accident and broke her leg, so she can't walk. Emma complained she had a very unfortunate workout and injured her neck, so she can't turn her head. And Tina says she fell from a bike and fractured her arm. But one of them is lying. Can you tell who? It's Jenna. If she can't walk, why does she even have a crutch to hold her up? If it's raining at midnight, can you expect that in 72 hours it'll be sunny? Nope, in 72 hours, it's going to be night again. In the room, there are two people, both of them sitting. But if one of them stands up, they won't be able to take the other one's place whatever they do. How is that possible? The second person is sitting on the first one's lap. A father tells his teenage daughter, You arrived very late at 3 a.m. and made us all worry a lot. I don't want this situation to repeat. His daughter, though, replies that it will never happen again. How can she be so sure? The father was talking about the birth of his daughter. An art expert paid big money at an auction for a painting that he knew didn't cost anything. He was an honest man and didn't have any criminal intentions. Why did he buy this picture? Although the painting costs nothing, its frame was a beautiful and expensive piece of art. A street food vendor has a sign on his stall saying, One hot dog, one and a half dollars. Three hot dogs, five dollars. He knows it's more expensive to buy three, but doesn't change his sign. Why? Each time a customer saw his sign, they would buy one hot dog, then another, and then a third one totaling up to $4.50. Thus, everyone's happy. The customers think they're clever, and the vendor gets his sales up. During a fire, a bank was robbed. The security guard told the police that he wanted to save a bag of money, but he had to crouch to tie his boot just in front of the emergency exit. At that moment, the door opened and hit him on the head. When he came to, the Hmm? money was missing. Why was the security guard arrested? Well, all emergency doors open outwards. You find yourself in a photo gallery. After looking at the wall, you realize that one of the pictures doesn't belong to the rest. You see a raccoon, a llama, a football, and a balloon. Can you tell which is the odd one out? It's the llama picture. The other three objects have two double letters in their names, but the llama only has one double. There's a barrel of water in the yard. You look inside and say that it's more than half full, but your friend argues that it's less than half full. How to figure out who's right without using any measuring tools or removing water from the barrel? Tilt the barrel so that the water touches the rim. If you can see the bottom, the barrel's less than half full. If the bottom is still covered with water, it's more. Sam and his brother John were always fighting. Their mother couldn't take it anymore and came up with a clever plan to stop them. She told the boys to stand on the same piece of paper in such a way that they didn't touch each other, and it worked. The boys couldn't fight anymore. How did she do it? The woman slipped the paper under a closed door and made Sam stand on one side and John on the other.
There is a bridge that is one mile long. It can hold only 5,000 pounds at one time. That's exactly the weight of the truck that's crossing it. The truck reaches the middle of the bridge and stops. Suddenly, a bird lands on the truck. Is the bridge going to collapse? The bridge isn't going to break down, because the truck has already used some gas to get to the middle, and therefore weighs less than 5,000 pounds. A young woman is sitting near the window. At first, she's deep in thought. Then, she suddenly decides to throw something out of the window. A couple minutes later, she drops on the floor unconscious. She's perfectly healthy and isn't prone to sudden faints. There was no one outside to have hit her either. So, what happened? She was knocked out by the very same thing she'd thrown out the window. It was a boomerang that came back and hit her on the head. Well, that was a dumb thing to do. Two men are in a room facing each other. One of the men is a psychic and can see into the future. He predicts that in 10 minutes, the other man will be hit on the back of his head. Of course, shocked and paranoid, the other man can't stop staring at the clock on the wall. And exactly 10 minutes later, he's lying face down on the floor. How could it happen? After 10 minutes, the man turned around to see if there was anyone behind him. At exactly that moment, the psychic hit him on the back of his skull. Well, I'm starting to think he wasn't a psychic after all. You walk up to the edge of a forest when suddenly you see a man in swimming trunks, goggles, and a snorkel going out of the thicket and falling on the ground as if exhausted. But you know the nearest body of water is several miles away. How did the weird man end up in the forest? There was a huge forest fire, and the plane that was extinguishing it had to scoop up water from the lake several miles away. Doing it, it accidentally captured the man snorkeling in the lake. He was dropped down together with the water and miraculously survived. Upon receiving an anonymous tip, the police rushed to a house where a suspect was said to be. They have no physical description, but they do know his name is John. When the cops reach the place, they see four people sitting at a table. A carpenter, a firefighter, a truck driver, and a mechanic. None of which have name tags on their uniforms. Without a moment's hesitation, they arrest the firefighter. So how did they know that's their guy? The firefighter was the only man in the room. All the others at the table were women and couldn't be named John. A man and his wife are driving down a highway when they run out of gas. So the husband decides to walk to the nearest gas station, which is about an hour's walk away. Before he heads off, he tells his spouse to stay in the car and lock all the doors and windows. The wife, bored and wanting to entertain herself, turns on the radio only to hear some shocking news. A notorious criminal has escaped from prison and was last seen on that very highway where the car is sitting. The reporter on the news gives a very detailed description of the escapee. The wife gets so scared that she quickly turns off the radio. She double-checks all the locks, but when she looks up, she sees the escapee just a few feet away from the car. When the man returns, he finds the car still all locked up, but his wife is nowhere to be seen. How is it possible? The answer is simple. The couple had been driving a convertible with the top down. And the woman wasn't, dare we say, terribly bright. An adventurer found a treasure chest in a cave that was guarded by a pirate. He had three keys, gold, silver, and black. But only one of them could open the chest the pirate would give the adventurer only one chance to reach the treasure. If he chose the right key, he could take the chest. If he chose incorrectly, the pirate would attack him. The only clue was this cipher. 
Which is the right key? The cipher is an anagram. Shuffle the letters a bit and you'll get the golden key. The adventurer went away unscathed, and the pirate was left frustrated and treasureless. Hey there! Are you ready for another brain workout today? Because I have 30 new riddles for you. I'll show you a pair of people for each one, and you'll have to decide which person doesn't behave wisely. You'll have 7 seconds per riddle to make your decision. Every right answer will award you one point. Ready? Grab a pencil and a piece of paper, and let's get started. Charlotte and Elizabeth are doing some homework. Charlotte is going to iron some clothes, and Elizabeth is about to cook. Who's not being smart? Elizabeth. Charlotte's safe because the iron is turned off. Lucas and Liam are going on a field trip with their kids. Lucas is distracted while his daughter is climbing a tree. Liam is talking to another parent while his son is petting a dog. Who is wrong? Lucas. The branch his daughter is climbing is cracking, and she is about to fall. Ava and Olivia are finally leaving home for their first night out after maternity leave. Ava decides to walk, and Olivia is waiting for a taxi. Who is not ready? Olivia. She forgot to finish her makeup. Michael and Logan are bloggers who take selfies in dangerous places. This time, Michael is taking a selfie while surfing on a huge wave, and Logan is taking one standing on the edge of a bridge. Who is not smart? Michael. In Logan's case, at least there are people around who can call emergency services if something goes wrong. Michael is alone. It's early morning. Ian and Nolan are driving their kids to school. Who is not smart? Nolan. His child is not in the car. Jackson and Emma are volunteering at an animal shelter. Jackson is feeding the cats, and Emma is washing the dogs. Who is wrong? Jackson. He gave the cats dog food by mistake. Scarlett and Ellie are going to bed. Scarlett kept her door open so her cat could enter during the night, while Ellie prefers to close her door. Who is not smart? Scarlett. You should always close your bedroom door at night. In case of fire, it'll stop the flames for a while and give you more time. Riley and Isabella are taking their kids to kindergarten. Riley is riding a bike with her daughter, and Isabella and her son are going by car. Who is wrong? Isabella. Her child isn't wearing a seatbelt. Lily and Oliver have job interviews at 4 o'clock. Lily is ironing her best suit, and Oliver is waiting in the hallway wearing jeans. Who's not getting the job today? Lily. She must have forgotten the time. The interview is in 5 minutes, and she's still at home. Sophia and Aiden are working in the garden. Sophia is watering the flowers while her cat is walking around. Aiden is mowing the lawn while his child is playing nearby. Who's not smart? Aiden. It's dangerous to use the lawnmower when children are close by. John and Brandon are making breakfast for their kids. John is making sandwiches, and Brandon is making eggs with bacon. Who is wrong? (laughs) 
Brandon. He forgot to turn on the stove. Thomas and Abigail are going on a date. Thomas arrived a half an hour early and decided to buy some flowers. Abigail just returned from London and is driving to meet him. Who is wrong? Abigail. She's driving on the left side of the road. Ryan and Kaylee are having fun outside during their Christmas break. Ryan is learning how to skate on the lake, and Kaylee is skiing in the forest. Who is not smart? Ryan. The ice on the lake is cracking, and there's no one around to help him. Asher and Haley are enjoying their vacations. Asher is chilling at the beach, and Haley is climbing the highest mountain around. Who is not behaving wisely? Asher. Although Haley's activity is quite risky, she seems to be okay. But Asher fell asleep at the beach and is going to get a sunburn. Chloe and Avery are having some quality time on Friday. Chloe is reading a book, and Avery is watching a documentary. Who is missing something? Avery. She forgot to turn off the oven, and something's burning. Hannah and Maya are meeting their friends today. Hannah arrived by bike and is waiting for her friend by the house. Maya arrived by car, opened the doors, and is waiting for her friend to come down. Who is not smart? Maya. It's not safe to stay in the car with unlocked doors. A stranger can quickly get in the car and she wouldn't be able to do anything from the front seat. Mason and Jacob are going on a trip to the desert, where they'll spend a whole day. Who is not adequately prepared? Mason. The sun is powerful, and he's not wearing a hat. Emily and Madison are spending their time outdoors, but it's not their lucky day. Emily stumbled and fell in some mud. Madison was swinging but fell. Now, they both are getting up. Who made a mistake? Madison. The swing is still moving, and it may hit her head if she gets up. Aubrey and James are cleaning the house. Aubrey is listening to music while vacuuming the living room, and James is washing the windows. Who is not being smart? Aubrey. The vacuum cleaner isn't plugged in. Mia and Ethan are going on summer vacation. Mia is going to Greece, and Ethan is visiting his brother in Sydney. Who is not smart? Ethan. He's packed shorts and swimwear, but he won't need them because it's winter in Australia. Carter and Layla are in a hurry for work. Carter is walking while talking on his phone, and Layla is running while texting. Who's going to be late? Layla. She's looking at her phone and doesn't see the pit she's about to walk into. Leah and Aaron are driving to meet their friends. Leah has all of her things scattered in the car. And Aaron is traveling above the speed limit. Who is not smart? Leah. It's not safe to keep unprotected things inside the car. In case she stops suddenly, something can hit her very hard. William and Daniel are driving and are late for work. Who is wrong? Daniel, he's driving way above the speed limit in the neighborhood. Jane and Amelia are resting in the park after running 5 miles. Jane is eating, and Amelia is drinking water from the fountain. Who is not smart?
Amelia. The warning sign says that the water isn't drinkable. Max and Ezra were driving around the desert and got stuck in the middle of nowhere. They burned a spare tire to produce some smoke. Max stayed close to the tire, and Ezra walked away in search of something helpful. Who is not smart? Ezra, you should never leave the vehicle. Chances are the rescuers will notice the smoke and find you. But if you go, you might miss them. Both Jonathan and Savannah didn't sleep well and are starting their morning. While Savannah is preparing some coffee, Jonathan is taking out the trash. Who is doing something wrong? Jonathan. Instead of the trash, he's taking out the old toys they collected to donate. Stella and Aurora didn't study for the test. One of them decided to try her best, and the other is planning to cheat. Can you spot who's cheating? Stella. She has a lot of bags surrounding her, so she must be trying to hide something. Miles and Cooper were walking in a park when a sudden storm erupted. Lightning struck a tree, and Miles decided to hide under it. Cooper entered a little shack nearby. Who is wrong? Miles. The belief that lightning never strikes in the same place twice is just a common misconception. An indoor shelter is one of the best places to hide. Leo and Melanie are preparing a barbecue party. Leo is cooking, and Melanie is decorating the yard. Who is not smart? Leo. While he's cooking, the meat is spoiling in the direct sun. Congrats! That's it for today. Now, sum up your points. If you got 10 points or less, you scored below average. Eh, don't be sad, it's just the beginning. You can check out some other riddles to train and prepare for the next round. If you got between 10 and 25 points, you scored average. Great, you're on the right way. And finally, if you got 26 points or more, you're in great intellectual shape. Here's an interactive medal from me and my admiration. Good for you!